Hey everybody, how you doing? Back for another segment of What Has COVID Taught You? My guest today is so incredibly talented. This, she's the kind of person you wish you had this kind of creativity, like God gave you this, but he didn't give it to you. And this way he gave it to you in a completely different way. She does lashes, she does makeup, but now she's got a whole new, what I tell you, decor business that is fantastic. It's called Beauty Fetish Decor. My friend is Sandy Lomax. Please give it up. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Jen. <laughs> hey, friend. Hey, friend. I'm so excited to be here with you, girl. I'm so glad to have you here, because particularly since we haven't actually seen each other in person, this is the yes. next best thing. So, you know, the question is, no. what has COVID taught you, friend? Woo. I got a list. <laughs> the first thing mm -hmm. is a little wine never hurt nobody. COVID taught me that. A little wine never hurt nobody. This is going to sound crazy. I would say COVID taught me God answers prayer. And that's a personal thing for me because I prayed for this break. So, <laughs> you know, where a lot of people are ready to jump back into life and they want things to be, you know, back to normal. I am absolutely a okay right now with this break because <laughs> I know that's you know, right. And, and and you notice we live in a in a fast paced world, and especially when you're connected to the industries we're connected to. And um, I'm an entrepreneur, so it's like nonstop hustle grind. We're taught don't sleep till you're dead, and I'm like that's a lie, you know, because <laughs> every time you turn around. There was always an event you had to attend. There was always a, um, you know, a, a screening, a birthday dinner, or, you know, there was always something. So outside of working long hours in a day, then there was always something I felt like I had to attend or support someone else because I want that support in return. But when I say that, meaning life was just going, right. going, going. And it was very tough for me to sometimes say no. So COVID has taught me no. And I get to say no unapologetically. I get to say no when people understand why I'm saying no. For me, this has been an awesome break and I'm a COVID survivor. You don't want anyone to get sick. You don't want, you know, all these deaths that have happened. But, you know, COVID, um, I think what it taught me and a lot of other people is, is it's okay to slow down. And mm -hmm. the, the one thing that I really realized, and I always knew it, but it really put things in perspective for me, is that you just need your necessity. When you're stuck at home, is your home suffice? Is it good enough? Is it the way you want to wake up and see it every day? So a lot of people started home improvements, including myself, things I didn't have time to do, filing paperwork, shredding paperwork, just, you know, just things just to make you feel like it's a part of your self care, getting rid of clutter, purging your closet, all this stuff you don't even need. You realize I got probably the same three COVID outfits, girl, that they on heavy rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Some sweat I think it just taught us what's necessary. It brought families together. Again, you sit down, you have dinner, you get to ask your loved one, you know, well, what did you learn? Maybe it's on Zoom, but what, what did you do today? You know, sometimes life is moving so fast, we don't remember what's important and what we really need. Got my skincare stuff from Tawanda Braxton's line. I've been doing facials at night, just loving up on myself. You know, COVID taught mm -hmm. me, God hears your prayers. It might take some years, but he actually made it where it was like, okay, you pray for time to be off, you know, and, and to get paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the things I think that I really have enjoyed in watching you is your beauty fetish line that is your home decor or your decor rather is it's just amazing i've never seen anything like it Thank talk about know. where that came from it was one of those things i prayed for you know um i'm an artistic person i love artsy things my mother is the same way i got it honest from her and i never had time so there would be times when i would have a little time off from work but i would be so exhausted that I didn't do the things that I enjoyed. So during this time off, I had to actually say, take this time and all those things that you wanted to do, write that list down and then start on them. You have no reason not to, there are no excuses now. And I pulled out all of my, my paint and canvases and 
I just started getting into it again. I just started just creating it, and it's so peaceful for me. It's so therapeutic. Sometimes I'm gonna be honest, I look at the, the stuff and I'm like, girl, you made that, you go, girl, you did that. <laughs> I'm so honored that everybody like you are spreading the word and, and really taking a liking to it and loving it because it's really just me at home creating a beautiful thing, a whole nother business. Personally, I've learned this for myself and other people since I've been doing this segment have said, you know, COVID has taught them to have multiple streams of income in addition to finding creative outlets, thing that you really enjoy and mm -hmm. translating that into a business that right. brought profit into the homes when it has been a really financially crippling time yes. for a lot of people. So talk about what you make specifically. I mean, if we're going to use the word exquisite, we're going to make it sound like it's going to be exquisite. So it's a wine butler and but serving trays. I actually, I've fallen in love with making wine stoppers. And for my nieces, mm -hmm. I've actually been doing book markers. And so now that's become a big thing because you have a lot of women in the book clubs. And so they're customizing your name is on it and whatever colors you want. Uh, Charcuterie boards and, and all the cutting boards, <laughs> vanity trays, just three tier serving trays. I've just fallen in love with it all. And I just get to let my mind just flow and, and wander and just, just, create whatever I'm imagining or visually seeing within. And I just let it all out. People can find you on Instagram as well as you have a website too. Tell us what that is. Beauty fetish, exquisite decor. Dot com. I believe in multiple streams of income. I mean, that was another thing the pandemic taught us. You know, you got to be prepared. We didn't see this coming. Nobody could have predicted this coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the whole thing in life and I'm so grateful for having this moment with you because I feel like if, if I had to tell the people anything if I could share from my experiences find find your purpose find your purpose and find your passion everything will follow after that it will fall into place and you have to make sure that you don't allow fear to hold you back because I'm going to be honest at one point I wanted to do this that I'm doing now but I was afraid that Oh, well, people won't care anything about what I have to say, or they won't watch or they want that. And I'm like, that ain't nothing but the devil. You have to mm -hmm. just do it. People, you have to support your yes. friends. Support your yes. friends. Don't expect to get something on the sly, on the cheap, on the hookup. You are a business owner. So if you are, if your friend is a business owner, support mm -hmm. your friend with Girl, your dollars. Girl, say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we have to support each other. I, I know that mm -hmm. it's considered a small business, but I think I'm a big thing. And that's another thing the pandemic taught me. Think big, think bold, do it in fear. You've already started a business. Nobody, there, there wasn't really a lot of support when I first started, but you know, do it anyway. Well, now I'm at the point where I'm like, I don't care if two people want to listen. I don't care if two people want to purchase the product. I am going to do it because it makes me feel good. And then I know that it will be too bigger and better, but we have to support each other. You know, mm -hmm. I have so many people, oh, I want this and I want that. And okay, well, here's the website where you pay for it so that I can monitor the spending of my business and the shipping because it's structured as a mm -hmm. business. You have to push each other beyond fear. What mm -hmm. you're doing right now is inspiring somebody else to move fear to the side. <laughs> We have all seen how and what COVID can do and its effect on people, particularly our community, and the fact that life is so fleeting. My thing now is I don't have time to waste time. No. So in the time that I have now, I am going to use it because I want to use it all up. Ooh, Jay. So you, it's funny because I was telling my boyfriend the other day, I have a love-hate for time. But the other <laughs> side of me, you know, I was exposed to mold. I went through a really, really, really rough time and I was on my deathbed. And so I appreciate and then surviving COVID when you see all these numbers and because I already had underlying conditions and I still have long haul um, after effects from it. You know, it's one of those things when you come close to death, you really appreciate life. Okay, I can't stop the clock. But what can I get done within the time period that God is allowing me to be on this earth? I am going mm -hmm. to live it up. I'm not going to care what anybody says. I'm not going to care about falling and bumping my head. 
I'm going to get back up. And that's just my mentality now is that I'm just going to, I'm going to do it all. Like I went from <laughs> Molly being too. on the cover of Dark and Lovely. I went from working for the state of Maryland as a disability specialist. I went from now doing resin art, you know, um, doing eyelashes, doing makeup. Nobody's going to put a limit on what I want to do in life because I'm trying to get it all in before I leave here. What do you hope that you will sustain once we are finally out of COVID? Self-care and saying no. No has a lot to do with my mental self-care. I want to take that with me because I have a habit of being a people pleaser. I love to see people happy. I love to, you know, mm -hmm. put a smile on their faces. No, no, ma'am. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no with the full stop. No, no explanation. No, just no, no. Sandy Lomax, you know what, friend? I have appreciated you being on this segment with me on what has COVID taught you. I love you. I and love again, you. please make sure you, su you support my friend. Follow her on um, Instagram. Facebook, and all the other social media platforms. Until then, we'll see you next time on What Has COVID Taught You? Bye! Bye.